But basically, the issue comes down to my engineering-bound mind. And in doing the analysis with that mind, I came across the idea from my own personal experience that the following is true. It is possible to use your psychic ability to affect reality. That is to say, manifesting circumstances in matter. I have personally done this, and I know that the effect can be long-lasting and perhaps permanent. But I also know that the amount of energy and the amount of effort in doing so is going to uh, be an issue involved in the manifestation of matter. And let me explain. I had run across a series of experiences and had these experiences uh, that one might say are on the enlightenment path. And if one followed the idea of the nine experiences before nirvana, then I've had perhaps uh, four or five of such experiences. And in the process, I came across the ability to alter my own body with mental thought. I had been suffering a 20-year bout with um, an incurable skin disease uh, called eczema. And I was able to alter within my consciousness the conditions uh, for the manifesting of that disease condition. And the disease left. But let me be very clear about this. In that process, I went through 30 days of having to apply that energy continuously for 30 days. On, on every other thought, I had to get in and apply that energy towards the curing of that disease. So it was not this idea of an instantaneous cure where you pass your hand over and as by magic, there it is. This was, in fact, the other way. This was something that had to be worked at. Now, this was done in, I believe, 2001 I did that, or 2002. In any event, I've had no reoccurrence of the condition and have no worries about that condition reoccurring ever again. I have permanently altered the template from which the... Uh, uh, matter manifests that is in my body and I know that that template will not revert to that disease condition but that having been said let me point out if one were to attempt to alter the template of the air in front of them on a table such that a full pint of Guinness would appear you would have to have a considerable amount of energy to first get that pint of Guinness to appear and then in order to ma manifest it continuously continuous energy would have to be applied. So the idea of co-creation, it makes sense, but it, you must understand that this is a very structured, orderly universe, and it will not occur by a single thought and thereafter stay. One must work with the templates, either through their, their psychic ability with a considerable amount of physical energy, or one must find some mechanism that would allow that energy to be tapped from universe, cycled back through your your thoughts or um, template altering software to allow universe to be recreated and so you would need a device to maintain that level of energy to keep that pint of Guinness there until you could drink it. Our work would seem to uh, uh, reinforce this idea that that time is basically an element one of the 66,000 aspects of the manifestation of these individual particles of matter and it makes sense that we would not be able to see vibrational levels that are higher than us. So uh, we are trapped by the, uh, by the um, uh, li limitations of our mind, which might be easily referenced as, say, 40 frames per second, the amount of frames it takes to make pictures into the appearance of a moving image. And so say that our minds indeed only can work at the 40 frames a second, and it would make sense then that our, our WebBot technology approach would pick up whatever the manifesting matter is spewing out and not anything on the other side of that. And in that sense, it certainly is limited. Now, uh, beyond that, I have to say that there appears to be discontinuities in that line of thought within the actual data itself that hints at a greater level of uh, vibrational awareness in those that are putting out the data which we pick up. That's a little bit convoluted, but let me restate it another way. Humans are probably antennae that are picking up not only the 40 frames per second image of manifesting matter, but some level beyond that that will vary by individuals. And that some level beyond that um, sensation for some individuals might cause mental illness that we might classify as, say, schizophrenia because the 40 frames a second mind and the social infrastructure around that mind do not allow that individual to uh, express or understand what they're feeling in an appropriate way so it comes out as an inappropriate mental illness in matter here. 
Now, that that understanding um, as a base, we have to say that there's some hints that indeed there is something um, uh, very large coming, an emotional shift or vibrational uh, change is indeed forecast within our work, but of course the words don't do it justice. And in fact, we know that there is a uh, a level of information that is hidden from us but might be attempting to be expressed because we get strange word combinations that almost make sense. They're not anything that would usually be seen or, or heard in discussions, but nonetheless these uh, multiplicity of um, seemingly di uh, divergent thoughts joined together in our data are almost Zen koan-like in the sense that there's a there's a feeling that we get from reading them that there's a, a level of meaning behind them that we just qu can't quite grasp. So I would agree with that statement that that indeed there is this level of something happening beyond our data and we can only see so far and and we do have a hint of that. Now on the other side of that the idea of a vast vibrational shift that would have some people shift into another timeline and so forth always brings me back to the engineering mind again where I say, while that indeed may be so, let us not lose sight of the fact that any shift out of 3D matter means death, at least of the 3D body that is left behind, because there's no point in carrying forward into a higher level of uh, vibration a uh, lower level vibratory matter created kind of thing. So in other words, if you're going to go into your ethereal body or any of the energetic bodies above a, the material world, you're not going to be dragging along this three-dimensional body with its aches and pains and its attachment to 3D material world. So I don't see how one can occur without the other, and people need to understand this. That I've seen a lot of people talk on um, the Internet about ascension, and the idea of a vast vibrational shift that will leave some people behind on the planet. And I suggest that all people, in the sense of manifesting corpse, will be left behind, uh, even if the consciousness goes elsewhere. End of statement. Interesting. Thank you. Um, I'll get on with the second question. Now we're much closer to the event, in inverted commas. Do you have a view on Terence McKenna and his interesting Time Wave Zero research? End of question. Oh, I love I love Terence McKenna. I've All got right. an entire entire set of um, uh, interviews from uh, one of the radio guys I I have done interviews with myself, and he did a whole series of interviews, many of which were not ever published, as far as I know, and he's in the process of bringing them out. McKenna's work is seminal. It is it is uh, beyond anything that Einstein ever could have come up with. It uh, steps us out of the single state of consciousness. In uh, my youth, when my body was uh, at that particular time, I also experimented with the uh, psychotropic substances in in some significant uh, level. And um, while I didn't go to the Amazon to do it, <laughs> I've had those those same kind of experiences that Terence McKenna had, and never thought to ever connect the I Ching to a timeline as a result. So, so he was able. It, it is. It's truly fantastic. Mm -hmm. I tend not to look at his work while I'm doing interpretation because I don't want to be uh, front-loading my own view of things. But um, his work, uh, I believe, is accurate. I believe it has been seriously mischaracterized. Mm. His insight that he came back with uh, from these journeys to the other dimension is on the order of a, a Volkswagen van, a Vanagon, <laughs> okay? And, and when I've gone, I've been able to bring back the Volkswagen bug and maybe a couple of dune buggies that have been altered from that bug, but never quite to level of insight that he had. Nonetheless, though, his process is extremely valid, and the suffering that he and his brother went through to bring this back to us uh, has never been lionized the way it should. End of statement.